So, hello everyone. I would like to introduce uh, Rujita Devakar. Um, she's a well known celebrity in the field of nutrition and science, one of India's leading um, nutrition experts. She's an author as well as a speaker on health and wellness as well as fitness. And uh, we are all very excited to be with Rujita today. And um, we thank you for taking the time to come join us. And uh, we'll hand. Are you able to hear me? Yes. Okay, all right. Uh, Assalamu alaikum and uh, good evening, everyone. And thank you very much for having me here at, um, you know, as a speaker. And I work in Mumbai, India. And essentially what uh, the work that I do involves helping people getting fitter, healthier, stronger than what they currently are. So I'm going to share a few tips which belong to, uh, you know, the Indian oral traditions that come from Ayurveda and yoga and from the wisdom of all of our uh, grandmothers about how does one stay fit and uh, what can one do to really be healthy and um, happy with one's body. So I'm going to be speaking for a for maybe about 15 minutes and then if you have any questions we can take them so the first thing that i want all of you to know is that though we talk a lot about our body in terms of body weight body weight is really not an indicator of fatness and of fitness as people who come from diverse places across the globe what we must know is that the region we come from our genetic makeup our height whether or not we are athletes or whether we are uh, sedentary individuals all of this makes a big difference to uh, how much we are going to weigh uh, especially as women what we must know is that um, is that beauty and health comes in all weights there are there is something called as healthy people but there isn't anything called as healthy weight there is nothing that you have to do to get to your healthy weight there are things that you will need to do to become healthy as a person but you don't need to do anything to get to your healthy weight so the first things first get rid of your weighing scale if you are one of those people who likes to weigh herself or himself every single morning and then start your day with like uh, depression almost or like loss of confidence then don't do that to yourself instead of standing on the wing scale stand on your own two feet and see how light you feel because uh, what has to do with fitness is how light one feels on one's feet and not how much one weighs we must understand that body weight comes from lean body weight which is the weight of our bones and muscles and uh, organs it also comes from fat which is the actual adipose tissue then of course there is water weight and then there is all of the uh, the miscellaneous stuff like the hair and nails and everything when you stand on the weighing scale, you can't quite tell uh, whether your lean body weight, that is the weight of your bones and your muscles, has gone up or has it gone down. Uh, you also cannot tell if the fat weight or the adipose tissue that you're carrying has the weight of that gone up or gone down. But what you surely know is that if you stand on your own two feet and if you feel light, then you know that the weight of your lean body you know the weight which is coming from your bones and muscles is higher than the weight which is coming from your fat or your adipose tissue you must remember that muscles have the ability to contract themselves against gravity and lift you up fat on the other hand has no ability to contract itself so it falls down with gravity so i really feel that uh, you know, um, in fact, when I was studying sports science and nutrition, one of the things that we did as a college project was really check on the benefits of the five times namaz per day on 
health and fitness parameters. And what we observed is that people who were fit could easily do their namaz on the floor and they had no trouble doing that. And it also in turn, you know, because it involves a few yoga postures, it also in turn kept them he healthy. People who were unhealthy found it difficult to offer namaz on the floor. And then it also in turn uh, reflected on all of their other health parameters. So instead of really standing up on the wing scale, what you must do is like try offering a namaz. And if you feel that you can sit down, bow down, and then get up without really needing the support of the floor to uh, support of your hand against the floor to get up, then you're fine, you're fit and you're healthy. If that isn't happening and if like offering the namaz, you're like, listen, pick me up from here. You know, if you're saying that to your son or your uh, daughter or you're needing a chair to grip yourself and get up, then it probably means that you need to spend more time getting healthier and fitter than what you currently are. But you must remember that weakness of your uh, bones, tendons, ligaments and joints can come at any body weight. Uh, heart trouble can come at any body weight. Diseases like diabetes and stuff can come at any body weight, but they will, you are protected from them if you're keeping your lean body weight high. And the way to keep your lean body weight high is what I'm going to be talking about today. So I'm not going to be talking about reducing your total body weight, but really about doing things which will help you enhance your lean body weight, the, the weight of your bones and muscles, because that is also the weight that we begin to lose as we get older. That is also the weight that is compromised on every time we have diseases like PCOD, thyroid, diabetes and such. So uh, here are top three things that you must do to keep your lean body weight high and the fat weight down and do know that you will not be able to assess this on the weighing scale. You will be able to assess this by standing on your own two feet. If you feel light, it means that your lean body weight is going up. It also means that, uh, you know, it will lead when your lean body weight is higher, it leads to an improvement in your sleep quality. It leads to better compliance with your exercise. It leads to smoother periods. It also leads to, uh, you know, lesser sugar cravings and it also leads to lesser bloating and acidity. Otherwise, we are all like, you know, when I'm subay mere jeans muja jati hai and sham ko I'm unable to button my jeans, you know. Uh, so those kind of things do not happen to people whose lean body weight is high. All right. So what are the top three things that you can do to keep the lean body weight high and the fat weight down? The first thing, of course, I've already told you is to remember that the weighing scale has nothing to do with fatness and uh, fitness it's more physics than actual health uh, the whole body weight formula so don't bo don't bother with it at all uh, if you're able to go into a namaz and come out of it feeling light and energetic it means that you're fine at whatever body weight that you are at but here are the top three things number one remember that to divide food as carbohydrate protein and fat is to do disservice to the fact that food is actually a blessing and because food is a blessing we also have a culture of sharing it with uh, one another in fact in islamic culture there's also a tradition of eating out of one plate because we do understand that uh, you know food must be shared with everyone so that it is healthy not just for us as individuals but it is also healthy for our local economy and it is also something which helps keep the global ecology in place so when we look at food as carbohydrate protein and fat then we are making a compromise not just on our health parameters but also that on the global ecological parameters if you just think about it about 10 years earlier uh, the only thing that you had to do to lose weight is cut down on fat, you know, and uh, now what all that you have to do. So when they said cut down on fat, you know, in uh, in countries like India, we began looking at 
dishes like halim and biryani with a bit of and even like sevaya and kheer and stuff like that with a bit of suspicion you know oh is this like really something which comes from our traditional wisdom of how various things come together and make a delicious dish or is this just coming from my grandmother's thing of wanting to fatten me up you know because uh, we would now see halim and stuff as like extremely fattening dishes because uh, the weight loss industry said listen don't eat fat 10 years later the weight loss industry is saying it is actually okay to eat fat you know what eating fat actually makes you thin all that you not to do or to now avoid is um is carbohydrate so now we are like acha matlab we can eat biryani lekin khali usme se pieces utha ke khao you know just eat the mutton and not the rice but then it won't be a biryani anymore so um we've gone from just avoid fat to now just avoid bread now if you did avoid just bread imagine what would have what would happen to all of the zartar parathas what would happen to all of the uh, paratha and chai or bread and chai that has been a part of so many of our uh, cultures you know from kashmir to ladakh to uh, so many parts of uh, you know afghanistan and pakistan and the arab world and stuff all of this has been a part of our food tradition but the weight loss industry is now telling us now don't even eat that that carb you know don't eat that bread you know because don't eat that paratha don't eat that roti don't eat that naan because it's just carbs in the next 10 years it's going to tell us that okay it's fine to eat all of that because see we went from don't eat fat to now we are at don't eat carbohydrates soon we are getting into the thing of don't eat protein with the whole vegan uh, trend what we ought to realize is that if we keep changing our diet according to what the weight loss industry is telling us then we are just going to be a confused population no other generation before us has been so confused about what one must truly eat so what is it that you must eat you must not eat food according to what has carbohydrate protein and fat instead you must eat food that is local seasonal and traditional so anything that belongs to the region that you currently live in you know because now we are spread across the entire globe eat food that belongs to the local farms of the region that you're living in that's the first thing the second thing is that eat food which is in season to take the example of india we get uh, you know mangoes in summer and not in winter so eating seasonal would then just mean eating the mango in summer and not in winter so just that basic common sensical thing and the third thing is eat food that is traditional so traditional or cultural food which belongs to uh you know the creativity and the wisdom and the cuisine of your region of your family of your, of the place that you're living in of your community celebrate that don't let the weight loss industry uh you know grab that and you know take that away from you don't let the weight loss industry take away the joy of eating a biryani from you if you're fee- eating a biryani and feeling guilty you're not a good uh, you know you're not being good to yourself so be good to yourself and know that eating local seasonal traditional is fine it keeps you healthy essentially it keeps your lean body weight high so things like rice things like ghee things like banana things like jackfruit things like uh, you know uh, the occasional banana chips we just had ona monam celebrates uh, banana chips so things which belong to your local season tra- seasonal traditional cultural uh, things celebrate those and look at suspicion for towards food which comes with hashtag hashtags you know like fat free carb free protein rich that's the stuff that you should be worried about so don't eat things out of packet eat stuff that comes from your culture which is local seasonal and traditional so that your health is good 
your uh, local economy is supported and the global ecology is also in a good place. So that's one of the first things that I would like to say to you. Essentially, what I'm saying is that eat lesser out of packets, cook more at home, eat more fresher food, you know. So, um, yeah, that's that's the first thing I mean, imagine sometimes around Ramzan, I even get uh, emails which say, oh, listen, can I eat dates? You know, aren't dates fattening? Aren't they too much sugar? And I often feel that this is such an irony because what we completely misunderstand or what we completely overlook is that dates are a natural produce. They come straight on trees. What they have is much more than sugar or sweetness or fattening or anything like that. If you must ask me a question, ask me, can I eat an ice cream or can I eat a chocolate? But I never get those kind of emails. I only get emails about can I eat a date? Can I eat a banana? Can I eat a mango? You know, so we must know that food which is growing naturally is good to eat. It is the food which is coming from packets um that we must avoid so that's point one because if you do that then your lean body weight stays high and your fat weight comes down so that is point number one point number two is that we must understand that exercise and staying active have to become an integral part of our life it cannot be something which uh which you're going to do till your cousin gets married for the new year um to fit into a certain dress and stuff like that. It must be thing, it, it has to be something that you understand that you owe to your body just because you are still alive. So till the last day of your life, you must aspire to stay fit and healthy by staying active and by uh, exercising. Now there is a difference between activity and exercise activity means being responsible for doing your own tasks by yourself now a whole lot of people in the west do surely do that you know once they're done with having their coffee taking that cup inside rinsing it putting it back in place being responsible for laying your own plates on the dining table doing jhadu pocha of your own house and stuff all of us in India, we've done it only right now, you know, currently in this whole lockdown situation. But what also happens, unfortunately, to uh, to women who belong to the Southeast Asian culture is that even when they live abroad, they still have husbands who have lived here, you know, so... Uh, they land up doing much more than what is due, the women, you know, not the men. So how do you know what is activity? Activity is what a lot of men, you know, uh, especially the ones who belong to the Indian heritage, uh, the stuff that a lot of men don't do, which is they are just not responsible for themselves. If you are inactive, you will never be fit. If you're inactive, you will never be able to have high lean body weight, even if you spend time exercising. So it's really important to understand that the kitchen and the house belongs to all of us, that we all must work together to run a well-functioning home and kitchen, that it cannot be something which is gender-based, that, you know, only women are going to do it and the men are going to do nothing because it is going to be unhealthy for men in the long run to not have, to not have stayed active for their entire lives. So activity is about not sitting at one place for too long. It's about not sitting at one place and just changing channels or Netflixing and overdosing on like endless videos. Staying active, doing things for yourself all around that, you know, in your own house, that's activity. Walking to your school, college, going out for a walk in your neighborhood, all of that is activity. You must remember, that just having access to walk around freely is a big thing. Countries which are war torn, you know, you can't just go around like that for a walk and stay active. So for all of us who, li who live in peaceful areas, we must understand that if we constantly, um, you know, delegate activity to someone else, we are robbing ourselves of a good experience of life. So that's activity. Now, what is exercise? Exercise is really challenging your body in terms of stamina, strength, 
stability and its stretching ability and doing a little more than what it can do. So go out cycling, go out running, go, go to the gym, lift weights, do yoga, practice dance, um, you know, do, do gymnastics, do what you would like to do. But make sure that you are spending at least half an hour every single day exercising. It's extremely important that you exercise because without exercise, you will not be able to have high lean body weight. A lot of times we misunderstand and we say things like, Mera metabolism baut kam ho gaya hai. I'm having low metabolism. I'm having a tough time. Lose my weight after I have turned 40 and it's only because of my metabolism slowing down. So what we must know here is that metabolism doesn't really slow down from birth to death. But there are two processes which contribute towards metabolism. They're called as anabolism and catabolism. Anabolism is building up of everything, building up of more bone tissue, muscle tissue and stuff like that. Catabolism is breakdown of everything in the body. What happens with age is that anabolism begins to contribute lesser and lesser towards metabolism and the contribution of catabolism begins to pick up. When this happens is when weight loss or losing fat or losing size becomes difficult. The way to prevent losses in anabolism is to stay active and to invest half an hour of exercise every day um, you know, of our lives. It's only then that anabolism will pick up because metabolism is pretty much the same from birth to death. What changes or what slows down is the contribution of anabolism. You want to change that and look fit, healthy and young and be more functional. Then, well, start exercising, start staying more active in your day. So that's my uh, second point. Please remember that the best exercise is the one that gets done. So do not think that one exercise is better than the other. The one that got done was the best exercise that you could have ever done. Similarly, the best time to exercise is the time at which you're actually exercising. So there, again, is no such hypothetical or uh, imaginary good time to exercise. Um, you know, a kaam karne ke liye har time hi shubh hota hai. So exercise is one of those good things that one does in one's life. And the third thing that I would like to say to you, which actually works at improving our lean body weight and keeping our fat weight down is good quality sleep. Good quality sleep is uh, the quality of sleep where you sleep by about 9, 30, 10 o'clock and wake up fresh at about 5 or 5.30. Um, you know, that's when we know that you are having good quality sleep. If you wake up every morning feeling groggy, if you wake up every morning trying to put your alarm on snooze, then you're not really um, having good quality sleep. We all know that quality of sleep begins to go down as we age. So, um, um, you know, a baby can sleep almost anywhere. You could be having Ganpati Visarjan on the street and little baby sleep. But if you are, you know, as we begin to get older, even if our partner changes her side or, you know, we, we feel like, oh, God, you know, this is disturbing. Even if someone comes and parks the car in our neighborhood, we are able to hear it and we feel that it is disturbing. So sleep is something that we begin to lose with age. The reason why we lose it is... Uh, you know, I always say this, that in Jawani, we lose our sleep because we are in ishq or something. We've fallen in love or we are romancing someone. So which is why we are losing sleep in the night and chen in the day. The reason why adults lose their sleep is because they're dieting. You know, they deprive themselves of food. They will not eat properly. Instead of eating dal, chawal or roti sabzi for dinner, they're trying to do uh, soup and salad or, you know, just going hungry to bed. Then you can't sleep. And if you are unable to sleep because you've not eaten enough and on the other hand, if you've eaten too much also, because if you deprive yourself for food for long periods of uh, time during the day, then in the night you have to eat a lot. So if you eat too little or if you eat too much, then you can't sleep. Also, if you're constantly on your phone trying to check who's messaged me, should I be talking to someone back home and stuff like that, then again, you cannot sleep. Uh, if you have a TV in the bedroom, it, begin, 
gets difficult to sleep. So work at building good sleep hygiene. Maybe take a warm water bath just before you go to bed or wash your hands and face just before you go to bed. Say a prayer before you go to bed. Uh, take a little bit of ghee and apply it on the soles of your feet just before you get, go to bed because all of these things will help you get good sleep. I do know a lot of people who wake up for their uh, morning prayer and then go to bed right after that. But in my eyes, a good Muslim is someone who wakes up fresh for the morning prayer and then doesn't need to go back to bed post the prayer, is just able to get up and start her day and start her life post the first prayer. If you're needing to uh, wake up, uh, if you're needing to go to bed after the first prayer, then no, it's, it's not really... Um, you know that's not really useful that's not really it it's basically saying that you need to pay attention to the way you're sleeping your sleep quality is getting poorer otherwise once you wake up in the morning you shouldn't feel like sleeping at all but what helps you to get good quality sleep in the night is a nap in the afternoon so make sure that you're napping for about 20 or 30 minutes every afternoon that also allows you to sleep well in the night and then you don't feel sleepy or groggy during the day nor do you get sugar cravings post every meal during the day so these are the three basic things that you can do to keep your lean body weight high and your fat weight down so first things first, do not look at food as protein, carbohydrate, and fat, but local, seasonal, traditional. Number two, make time for activity and exercise, especially if you are men of South Asian origin. Make sure that you need to get more active in your homes than what you currently are. And uh, invest 30 minutes of exercise every single day. Everyone, you know, men, women, children. Children should be doing at least 90 minutes of exercise as adults, at least 30 minutes every single day. And the third thing is pay attention to sleep. If you do these three things, then do know that, you know, you will have good lean weight and you will have low fat weight. It's the best way to prevent diseases. It's the best way to lead a good life. It's the best way to have good mood, good skin, good hair and stuff. So that's all that I would like to say to you uh, this morning or uh, your evening. Thank you very much for listening to me with so much patience. If you have a few questions, maybe we can take a couple of them. Sure. Thank you. And I'd like to present one question. Um, I think um, uh, uh, in addition to um, what you mentioned, in the current scenario of, of you know, the COVID going around and everything, um, could you give any tips on nutrition? and immunity, what do you think? Um, uh, you know, a couple minutes on that. Sure. Um, you know, a lot Can of times... Can you Chinese hear people... me? Yes. Uh, are you able to hear me? Yes. Okay, all right. So, no. I was just saying that uh, with the current I pandemic, yes, um, yes, yes. Uh, COVID and everything, um, how would you suggest, uh, you know, we use nutrition to kind of help with our immunity? Right. You know, a lot of us feel that now that there is COVID, we need to do yes, something other than... Uh, eating local, seasonal, traditional, making time to stay active and exercising and sleeping on time. What all of us must realize is that immunity is one of the body's natural responses. All that we can do is really go against uh, commonsensical wisdom to really destroy the body's ability to 
fight back anything that attacks us you know so to we can do things to lower bodies uh, we need to go really out of our way to lower our body's immunity we must ensure that we are not letting the food pharmaceutical and the weight loss industry to monetize the situation by having everything now which comes with a hashtag immunity booster you know everything from a uh, hand wash to a napkin to everything in between is now immunity boosting but we often have this question but there must be something specific that i can do to uh, boost my immunity well number one don't go on a diet don't be depriving yourself of food uh, eat in a wholesome way sit down and chew your food properly so that your body receives all the nutrients that it must be receiving and that it has a good immune response but if you do want specifics then amla you know the indian gooseberry that is something which is rich in vitamin c and we've always had a tradition of either converting that into an achar or making it into a sharbat and that is something which is useful there is also arev or haleem seeds which are rich in iron rich in vitamin a rich in vitamin e and making laddus out of it or adding that to our milk that is something which can boost our immunity uh, nalli nihari is something which helps in uh, boosting our immunity because we've traditionally had it as something to help us recover from any kind of an illness um, a simple meal of dal rice is also good for the immune function and staying well hydrated through the day you know so not drinking colas refraining from drinking alcohol not overdosing on chai and coffee even those things help with uh, a good immune function thank you very much for having me here i think there is some network problem where i'm not really able to hear anyone but thanks a lot for having me here this evening and good night have a nice weekend thank you so much rojita uh, on behalf of uh, maniza and everyone else if there are any thank other you. questions everyone can just email it to us i'll put down the email id on the chat Hi Maniza thank you so much sorry we lost you uh, in between so uh, no uh, but thank you so much for having rojita for the talk it was lovely all of you have been a great audience thank you so much I'm going to take your leave now.